For as long as we've imagined artificial intelligence, we've imagined it going rogue. And movies have done more than anything else to shape our popular conception of what a rogue AI might look like. In this video, I'll be covering rogue AI in films spanning the years 1968 to 1986, starting with the 1968 classic, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Inspired by the science fiction writings of Arthur C. Clarke in the 1950s, Space Odyssey depicts space travel in the future. To put it into perspective, the first moon landing was one year after this movie came out, but the Gemini program concluded in 1966, so we had already seen some examples of real space flight by this point. Set 33 years in the future, we're introduced to HAL 9000, an artificial intelligence. AI was still a new concept in the 60s, and for many people, HAL 9000 was the introduction to the concept of AI. HAL is perhaps my favorite depiction of AI in film, mostly because he doesn't have a body. If you want to interact with him, you simply speak, and one of his microphones will pick up your voice. He sees through the many cameras on the ship, giving him an omnipresence that is very unsettling. He's set up from the start to be very intelligent. One of these indicators is that he can beat humans in chess. And while that's not very interesting today, in 1968, people weren't even sure that computers could beat people in chess. And it wasn't until 1997 that IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov in a game of chess. As a side note, you might want to check out the documentary Kasparov and the Machine. Very interesting. So, how does Hal go rogue? Well, basically, he's given conflicting information. Hal alone knows the true purpose of the mission to Jupiter, and he's been instructed to hide that purpose from the crew. Furthermore, Hal decides that carrying out the mission takes higher priority than human life. Hal seems to have a very strong self-preservation instinct, which causes him to kill the entire crew in an attempt to protect the mission and himself. Basically, the moral of the story is that if you give an autonomous machine that much power, you might regret it later. Interestingly enough, since Hal is integral to the functioning of the ship, he is not completely shut down, but his higher order functions are reduced until he is no longer a threat to Dave. In terms of cultural impact, HAL 9000 set the stage for all AI to come. He's a reference point, and with every movie you see that has a machine, you ask yourself a question, is this going to turn out like HAL, or is it not? So here's to you, HAL, in my opinion, one of the greatest robots ever made. Next up, we have Westworld from 1973. Set in some non-specific time in the near future, Westworld is an adult amusement park featuring androids. Together with the neighboring parks of Medieval World and Roman World, Westworld offers an immersive roleplay experience where you can basically do anything you want because everybody is a robot NPC. These robots are more or less autonomous, but behind the scenes they are constantly monitored and their behavior is tweaked to provide a better experience for the paying customer. This starts to go wrong when the robots start disobeying orders. There's no real explanation for why this happens, but this behavior seems to spread like a virus. Eventually, even emergency shutdown protocols don't work, and all of the robots go berserk, killing all of the people. This is a classic example of AI going rogue, and the fact that it's never fully explained why just lends to the fear that we have that we might create something that we don't understand. While the plot is a little bit hand wavy at times, if you're into older sci-fi, I think this film is still worth watching. Up next we have the 1979 sci-fi classic Alien. Here we have not one, but two examples of rogue AI. Everybody remembers Ash, the android played by Bilbo Baggins, but less people talk about Mother, the ship's computer. The insidious part about this plot is that while at first you might think that the android has gone berserk, in fact this rogue AI might not be so rogue after all. 
He has orders from Mother to bring back the alien, and the crew is expendable. It's at least strongly implied that Mother made this decision by itself on behalf of the company. And while HAL 9000 had conflicting orders that caused it to behave unexpectedly, Mother's behavior is probably exactly what's expected by the company. The movie outlines this dystopian future where a mega corporation doesn't have any regard for the people that work for it, and machines make cold decisions about the welfare of the company. While Mother does not directly interfere with the actions of the crew, Ash does with the full permission of Mother. So this duo of a passive and active force working against the crew creates for an interesting dynamic. While the earlier films that I've covered play on the idea that something can go horribly wrong, Alien is more along the lines of artificial intelligence being actually malicious. And the uniqueness of this situation is what really puts it up there as one of my favorite depictions of AI. Moving into the next decade, we have no shortage of rogue AI to choose from, so let's start with the 1982 movie Blade Runner. Set in the futuristic year of 2019, Han Solo is tasked with hunting down some rogue androids. These androids are biomechanical in nature, and one may argue that they are less intelligent machine and more synthetic life. But if we go with a loose definition of intelligent beings manufactured by humans, you can consider them artificial intelligence. Besides, I just wanted an excuse to talk about Blade Runner, so humor me. I guess I really am stretching the definition of rogue AI here, because these replicants have the very human motivation of survival. The problem is that they have very short lifespans, and Roadbaddy seeks a way to extend his life and he's willing to resort to any means necessary to further his goal. He ultimately finds his own creator, and when he doesn't get the answer he wants, he kills him. So yeah, I guess creating an artificial intelligent being that ultimately comes back to kill you does indeed qualify as rogue AI, even if Tyrell kind of deserved it for playing God. Up next, we're going to look at another movie that came out in 1982, Disney's Tron. When the dude gets scanned into a computer, he has to contend with the Master Control Program, which is a big bad program acting as a tyrant over the whole system. While the anthropomorphic computer characters in this movie are depicted kind of as traditionally written programs, inside the computer they all have a life of their own. The dude teams up with the program that he wrote, Tron, and together they defeat the evil master control program. I don't really have much more to say on this one, just figured I'd give it a mention. For our next flick, we only have to jump forward one more year with War Games from 1983. The premise of this movie is that the US military has automated launching nuclear weapons with an AI called Whopper. And it just so happens that Whopper is connected to the internet for some reason, and Ferris Bueller accidentally hacks it to play a game called Thermonuclear War. Now, while Ferris Bueller thinks this is just a harmless game, it is actually a simulation for Whopper. Fast forward a little bit, and the United States military finds Ferris Bueller and his girlfriend, the weird girl from Breakfast Club, and they bring him into NORAD HQ for some reason. At some point, Whopper decides to play the game of thermonuclear war again, this time uh, involving real nukes. But Ferris Bueller saves the day by making it play tic-tac-toe with itself. After tying with itself many, many times, it concludes that it shouldn't play the game to begin with. Applying this logic to its nuclear countdown, Whopper cancels the launch and everybody has a happy ending. While that's a pretty silly synopsis, the depiction of AI in this movie is still pretty interesting. Not a lot of people thought about the training process of AI, so showing it learn things was a pretty cool concept for the time. 
and I guess it highlights the importance of not giving a computer the authority to launch nukes, which is, oddly enough, the same theme for our next movie, Terminator, in 1984. In this alternate universe, Whopper sent back in time a Terminator to kill Matthew Broderick so that he didn't teach it tic-tac-toe. But seriously, when you think of Rogue AI, you think Skynet. Anytime there are discussions about advancements in AI, Skynet is inevitably brought up. It just speaks to how well Terminator has captured the popular imagination. While the nature of Skynet is expanded upon more in the second film, an AI nuking everybody and trying to exterminate humanity still exists here as the backstory. And the Terminator itself is an autonomous agent of Skynet. The interesting part about the Terminator is that it's a second generation AI. It's a machine designed by a machine, which begs the question, if it's a machine designed by a machine, why does Terminator vision still look like a computer console output? The Terminator has many advanced features, one of which is very near and dear to my heart, voice cloning. After he finds Sarah Connor's mom, he clones her voice, kills her, and then calls Sarah Connor, impersonating her. In 1984, that was a pretty crazy notion to think that a computer could clone somebody's voice. What else can I say about this movie? It's great, it's a classic, and the threat of machines rising up to kill all of humanity has traumatized multiple generations. So next time you have a nightmare about a machine trying to kill you, just remember that their weakness is a hydraulic press. Let's end on a lighter note with the 1986 movie Short Circuit. Ali Sheedy returns, and this time she's some weird hippie girl. She has a run-in with Johnny Number no. 5, an experimental military weapon that's been struck by lightning and now it's gone rogue. Only this time, going against its programming means that it's turned into a gentle soul that doesn't want to hurt anybody. Basically, the explanation is that the lightning strike rearranged its circuits in a way that gave it life. And well, now Johnny Number 5 is alive. The cool thing about Johnny is that he's actually a real robot for the most part. It's not some stop-motion thing. A lot of the times, it's actually that robot being remote controlled. There's not a whole lot to say about the plot. He goes through a lot of shenanigans to escape the company that made him. And along the way, he learns a lot of stuff. Interesting that both movies that I've highlighted today that involve a machine actively learning share the common thread of Ali Sheedy, of all people. And that's all I've got for you today. There are just way too many movies after 1986 to cover, so I figured I'd stop it here. Every once in a while, I feel like switching it up from the other style of videos that I make. If you want to see more like this, just let me know. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.